Today I want to do a brief overview of my take on the, uh, the 10 C's of survivability and mine is the 10 C's plus. I'm going to briefly touch on the 5, 10 and then the 10 plus uh, which are some other items that I tend to carry with me uh, for, for various reasons and I'll go over those. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this uh, fairly limited. Uh, I don't want to go into a lot of detail, I just want to talk about the categories more than anything. So specifics of the item I'm not, gonna, I'm not really going to touch on because my opinion is um, I don't think it really matters so much what brand or what style somebody uses, if it works for them, if they're comfortable with it, if they'll carry it and use it correctly and it'll get the job done. That to me is more important than do you carry this brand or this style or this grind or this whatever the specific is. I don't want to get into that. So uh, go ahead and watch the intro and we'll be right back and we'll kick into it. start off with the uh, core five C's and if you've been in the outdoors world at all uh, done any research in bushcraft woodcraft wood lore whatever terminology uh, you choose to follow it under or, or call it by uh, again not wanting to get hung up on that uh, but if you've done any research in that at all outdoor survival skills that kind of stuff you've probably come across the five C's and the 10 C's uh, of survivability. And so I'm going to touch on the base or the core of five C's. Then I'm going to add in the secondary, which would make the 10 C's. And then I'm going to add in some further categories that I carry uh, in some form or fashion to go with those to give me a level of uh, not just surviving, but thriving. Uh, whether that's just for a day hike or an overnighter or even a longer term multi-day outing these are items that I try to carry in some form or fashion with me so let's start with uh, first section of the core is cutting and for most people that is a fixed blade knife I'm going to try and zoom in on this a little bit uh, just so you can kind of see it here so a fixed blade knife of some type. Uh, this is a short blade, quarter inch thick. Mine happens to be 01 high carbon tool steel with a Scandi grind. Uh, a lot of you like to carry larger knives and that's fine. Personally, I'm a shorter knife kind of guy. This does everything that I need it to do. Uh, if I need something more, let me back out here a little bit so you can see me a little bit better. If I need something more, I have a larger knife uh, that falls more into the chopper category. And sometimes I'll carry that with, depends on what I'm doing. Uh, but a fixed blade knife is primary on the cutting list for most people. Uh, I often carry some kind of a pocket knife with me, a little teeny. Uh, for me, it's a Swiss Army Knife Classic. Uh, that I carry every day. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a, a larger folder or whatever, but I think it's a good habit for everyone to have to carry some kind of a small pocket knife. So that for me is always on me. Uh, my next item would be another tool that's always on me, and that is some kind of a multi-tool. Uh, I prefer uh, the smaller uh, Leatherman series, like the Sidekick is what I carry normally on a daily basis, but uh, it doesn't matter. Swiss Army Knife makes a great product, Gerber makes really good product. So again, without getting into the why and, and all of that as far as brand, I, I think everybody should have some kind of a multi-tool uh, for the pliers, for the uh, multiple blades, the screwdriver bits, all that kind of stuff can come in handy, uh, not just in the woods, but at any point. 
So a multi-tool for me is a must on the list. And then the final item I'm going to have in the cutting category is some kind of a folding saw. Now, most of you are probably familiar with the Baco Laplander. Uh, this is a Creek Stewart folding saw that I, saw that I got out of an Apaca box. Um, very lightweight. It has a rubberized grip that's rounded so it's comfortable to hold. Uh, packs away really nice and doesn't take up a lot of space. But the one thing I like about this as opposed to like the Baco or the Silky, and again, if those work for you, great. Uh, but I like the lever latch style securing latch. Uh, I am always nervous about the ones with the, the side, uh, side release button or the top push button uh, just because I'm, I'm concerned that at some point if my hand slips and I release that, the blade is going to come down and cut into my fingers. I've seen that happen. Uh, I have another one that is from a, a hardware store. Uh, that has that kind of a button on it. Uh, I believe that one's actually the SOG, S-O-G. Uh, and it's a great saw. However, I have hit that button accidentally and it has started to fold while in use. And so for me, I really like the lever latch. This is a lot like the uh, Opinel uh, style folding saw. But again, whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you can afford, if you're gonna carry it, it gets the job done and you can use it safely. I'm not here to talk to you about the branding, but uh, I do like this style of latch closer, so I keep using this one. Another thing I like about this particular saw is that the blade is removable and replaceable. So if anything goes wrong with it, I can put a spare in it, and I typically keep a spare in my pack. So folding saw is the last for me of the cutting line. Now you might wonder why I don't have a hatchet or an ax. I own those tools, but I have found personally when I go out, I almost never use those. So unless I'm doing a multi-day trip where there's some specific reason where I would need to maybe fell a small tree or I'm going to be doing a lot of larger wood processing, the knife and the saw are generally more than enough for what I'm going to take care of. So for the purpose of this video, these are the four items as far as cutting go that I carry. Next on my list is going to be combustion. And I'm going to go back to my uh, fixed blade knife sheath. On my knife sheath, I carry a fire steel, a ferro rod. Uh, I think most of us are familiar with that. Easy to use. Part of why I carry a blade with the 90 degree spine is so I can strike that really easy. Uh, so that's always with me when I'm out in the woods and mountains, whatever. If I'm outdoors doing something, then this is typically with me. Uh, so ferro rod, and then I have two parts to my primary combustion kit. I have an ignition kit and a tinders kit, and I keep them separated for a specific reason. I don't like uh, having to dig through all of my tinder and get it out of the way to get to my ignition items. I want ignition to be as quick as possible. I like to be able to get out my tinder, get stuff set up, and then I like to move on to getting the fire started. Uh, both of these are capable of going on a belt. I have a dangler belt loop on my tinder kit, so there, and then I have a belt loop on my ignition kit. My ignition kit consists of, again, the ferro rod that's on my knife sheath, and then a flint and steel, and a 7X magnification glass lens. And then finally, uh, I have in my pocket almost at all times a lighter and then on a lanyard on my neck, I keep a Kydex sheath with another lighter and then scattered throughout my gear are typically one or two more, but I always try to have at least one lighter with me and usually two. So I keep four forms of ignition and then I try to keep between three and five tinder sources. And my tinder is um, usually processed birch bark if I can get it. I don't have birch local to me, so I usually have to have friends from around the country uh, shipped to me as they can find it and have extra. But I keep processed birch bark uh, that is dried and ready to go. It's, uh, it's really great tinder. I keep uh, jute twine that I've taken a thin or narrow, uh, narrow tooth comb and 
comb through that to separate the fibers in the jute twine. And I keep usually enough in here to, to uh, create three to five tinder bundles. I also keep some fat wood in here. Uh, and then I keep a little container, a little plastic container with, uh, if you scrape the fat wood with the, the uh, spine of your knife, you'll get a really fine powdery dust. And then if you process anything like um, birch bark or any of your, your tree barks, you'll often do that with the spine as well. You'll get that powdery uh, dust. And I keep that together in a little pouch. Uh, and I call that pixie dust or, or magic dust uh, for starting fire. And that's really easy to catch a spark. So I'll build my, my tinder bundle with uh, my bird's nest with the jute. I'll usually put in a little bit of birch bark, the, the processed birch bark, and then I'll sprinkle in right at the core some of that pixie dust, that powdered dust. Uh, and then once I get that started with either flint and steel and char cloth, I keep char cloth in there, I keep a char tin uh, and some extra cotton linen cloth that I can make uh, more char material if I need it. But I try and keep all of that in there and uh, as I you know, as I go through, if I'm starting to get low on char cloth, then when I've got a fire going, I'll throw my char tin in and I'll create another batch of char material. Uh, I did not mention, but really quickly, in my ignition kit, I also keep a little packet of char cloth, right? So that I've always got some with me, even if I get separated from, uh, say, my, my tinder pouch or, or whatever, I've always got a little bit of, of char cloth with me in the ignition pouch. So next on the list um, for me is, is cover. And what I use for cover is this uh, hideaway tarpaulin. Uh, unless I'm going for longer, this is like my day hike or maybe uh, in warmer weather overnighter. But this is kind of my emergency shelter. So the, the uh, tarpaulin is a waterproof rain poncho that has the tie-out sewn in so that it can be used as a tarp shelter. And so I keep in here, along with the poncho, uh, six of the little plastic six and a half inch ABS uh, plastic tent stakes, tent pegs. And I keep a 35-ish foot of uh, uh, hank of blaze orange 557 strand paracord. And then I have currently in here 100 foot, approximately 100 foot uh, hank of camouflage seven strand 550 paracord so that I can create a ridge line. Uh, I keep on the end of that pre-tied uh, bowling knot so that I can use stakes as two of the stakes as toggles, mount up my ridge line, put my uh, poncho over as a tarp shelter, and then run out guy lines using a bank line or something, uh, more paracord, whatever, to hold out the side walls of my tarp shelter. So that's my cover, uh, dual purpose, rain cover, as well as shelter. Next for me then is going to be container. And I include a lot of things in containers. I, can, uh, I include my, my bag or my pack. I include any little pouches or whatever that hold, this specifically holds my headlamp and my compass. But this for me is a container. And uh, I have one other container that I'm going to talk about later that I have designated for a specific purpose, but that'll be in the plus section. So the last thing, or the next to the last, uh, as far as container goes, is my water carrying container. And this is the most important container aside from the pack, in my opinion. And I keep it in its own little pouch so that it can go onto my belt, or I can make a paracord lanyard for it and, and dangle it or whatever. But in this pouch, I have the, uh, the canteen, the nesting cup with the lid, and at the back I keep a uh, fish mouth spreader so that I can collect, uh, boil and purify, uh, and heat and cook water, food, whatever. This is my kind of all-in-one water and food preparation and carrying system. Uh, I keep in the pouch a uh, titanium folding spork. I keep a uh, folding sheep's foot knife that it becomes a redundant cutting tool for me, but I only use this for food preparation uh, most of the time. So only in an extreme emergency would I use that for anything else. 
And then again, as I talked about in combustion, I keep spares uh, of lighters throughout my kit. So in here, I keep a spare uh, lighter. I also have on the other little pouch over here, uh, four Esbit fuel tabs, and then uh, an Esbit, a titanium Esbit stove so that I can set the cup or the canteen on and boil water in an emergency. And there's actually another Esbit fuel tab. So five fuel tabs and an Esbit stove is what I keep in here. So that's my container. And then the last item in the core five is going to be cordage. And so I tend to keep with me, aside from the cordage that's in here for ridge line and guy lines, that's spare, right? I keep a one pound roll of number 36 uh, tarred bank line. This is a brand new roll. I used up the last of my other one. So one pound roll. And then I keep a, uh, a cordage wrap uh, with a hank of Coyote Brown, I think this one is, 557 strand paracord. And on the spool, there is a razor blade built in on the, on the one side and then a spot to secure a Bic Mini, so another combustion tool. And it has the, the little knockout so that the fuel button cannot be depressed while this is in here. So that protects that, so I always have an extra uh, combustion source there. So that is the Core 5. Uh, we're gonna come right back in just a moment and I will talk about the uh, second set of five, the extended or the, the uh, six through 10 categories. All right, we're back. So six through 10, for me, number six is candling. And for candling, a lot of people choose uh, flashlights or, or whatever, and it doesn't matter. For me, I choose a headlight. I like the ability to use it hands-free. I have the adaptable or the adjustable angle piece for mine. Uh, my suggestion or my recommendation is not a brand, but uh, something that is waterproof and something that is both really bright and adjustable and dimmable. Uh, there are some features that I think are beneficial, uh, but I think uh, bright and dimmable are critical, and then I think waterproof is very important. This particular uh, headlamp is 350 lumens. I would say I wouldn't go, my, my recommendation would be is I wouldn't go anything lower than 150, and I would try and stay 200 or higher lumens uh, for brightness, just so you can see really well. But then dimmability, so that you don't always want full-blown brightness. Uh, sometimes you just need a little bit of light to see what you're doing right in your area. So dimmable is, is for me, I think, a very important um, function of the light. Then it has red, green, and blue uh, lights. Uh, I would say if you can get one that at least has red for protecting your night vision, that's a fantastic feature. But again, uh, it's more important to have a light source than to not have one at all. And if what's holding you back is the price of getting one with the extra features, then get what you can afford and save up to buy something better. But for me, my candling device is a headlamp. Next on that list for me is compass. And my compass serves multiple functions, multiple uh, features based on it. And I try to keep most of my core items, at least the, the main 10, uh, multifunctional in some form or fashion. And so for me, the, the fact that the uh, base plate compass has uh, a ruler and a scale is nice. Uh, the fact that it has a mirror that I can use for emergency signaling, right? I can look through, through the sighting hole and I can signal. I can also use it for self-inspection, see if I've got something in my eye or on my face or in some place, you know, like a tick in my armpit or whatever, some place that's hard to see. Normally that, that has a, uh, a myriad of uses with that mirror. And then I also have the, um, the magnifying lens built into the base plate. And on the Sunto, uh, I know on some of the others, Brunton and a couple of the others, uh, that it's also got a decent magnifying lens built in it. 
but I know on the Sunto it is powerful enough that if you if you have good enough conditions, you can actually use the the magnifying lens on the compass to uh, start a solar ignition fire. Um, so that's nice uh, redundancy there. And then I keep a paste bead set with uh, glow in the dark beads on my compass so that I've always got a way to count my steps. And then I've got another piece that's going to come in later uh, that will work along with that. So that's my, uh, that's my compass. Next would be canvas repair uh, is the category. Canvas repair needle. I keep a little leather pouch sewing kit with multiple needles and some waxed thread. Um, the needles I carry is a number 10 and a number 14 canvas sail needle, uh, fitting the canvas repair needle category. I also carry uh, two hook needles of various sizes, a larger and a smaller. I carry a couple leather needles and then a couple regular sewing needles. And then I keep a little spool of waxed thread right at the back. I know I can use the inner fibers from the 550 paracord, the inner strands. I know I can use fibers from the jute twine, and I know I can use fibers uh, if I unbraid the, uh, the tarred bank line. All of those can be used for sewing, but I try to keep a little set of specifically for sewing wax thread to use with that. Moving on next for me would be uh, cargo tape. And I typically have with me uh, the one inch Gorilla Tape. It seems to be the best one of the best tapes or better tapes, but I, in this case, in this kit, I happen to have about 35 feet of traditional silver duct tape. Uh, I've taken a drinking straw to make the core and wrapped that around. Uh, I had about 35 feet, maybe a little more, give or take, whatever, but about 35 feet of tape. This can be used for repairing your tarp, for repairing your backpack, your shoes, clothing, whatever. Uh, Lots of uses for tape, and again, duct tape or Gorilla Tape can be peeled off and used as tinder to get a fire going, so multiple purposes for that as well. I also keep, this is an old debit card of mine that had, uh, the magnetic strip had cracked, and so I keep wrapped around it uh, some Leukotape P for blisters or to hold gauze or something like that on. It's a fantastic tape, it's uh, waterproof, and if, it, if you put it on, it's going to stay on until you get, intend to get it off. You have to work to get it off. So Leukotape is fantastic. I keep about 10 to 12 feet there. And then I also keep some electrical tape. Never know when you're going to need that. Uh, it serves a lot of purposes as well. And again, about 10 to 12 feet. So that's my, uh, my cargo tape section are those items. Finally, in the uh, last of the 10 is cotton material, right? Uh, cotton fabric. I carry a 100% cotton bandana that I use for straining particulate and debris when I'm getting water. I use this to strain out the big junk and then I boil the water to purify it and make it safe to drink. So cotton bandana, uh, cotton schmog, uh, which is great for if you're dealing with dust and that kind of stuff. You can wrap it around and, and it makes it easier for you to breathe right? Uh, smoke and dust it isn't perfect, but it will help in a pinch. It's also great for shade when it's really bright out. If it's hot, uh, you're, it'll absorb and wick the sweat away. And then as breeze moves through the, the open weave of the fabric, it works like um, evaporative cooling to keep you cool. You can uh, roll it up and use it like a scarf around your neck. So just tons of purposes for a schmog. Uh, really useful. You can use it as a sling if you get wounded and you have to secure an arm. Uh, you can use it as a makeshift tourniquet. Just tons of uses. So cotton bandana, cotton schmog, and again in my tinder kit I keep a piece of uh, a square 100% cotton linen to make more char material. So that rounds out my uh, core 10 of the 10 C's. And now I want to move on and I want to talk about a few other C categories that I use. And again, some of these could overlap and go into multiple categories, and they do, but I just want to talk about it. Uh, first on that is I have two sections of care. Uh, so the category is care, 
And the first for me is self-care. Uh, and in that I keep my, my small first aid kit. This is kind of an expanded boo-boo kit. It's not a trauma kit. It's not a full-blown medical kit. But it is a very effective uh, overdone boo-boo kit. So I have lots of items in here. I keep some pure Castillo soap so that, <coughs> so that I can clean my hands or, or a wound area right. I don't want to get anything more in there. So uh, pure Castillo soap. I have triple antibiotic ointment. I have uh, anti-itch cream. I have anti-diarrhea. I have anti um, antibacterial wipes. I have bandages at gauze, so a really overdone boo-boo kit is part A of the care for self. Part B of the care for self is a potty kit. And I, when I'm going out into the mountains or the woods, I always carry a potty kit. This is a, a water resistant, I won't say it's absolutely waterproof, but a water resistant mesh pouch. Um, and in there I keep a uh, Deuce of Spades Ultralight Trowel, and then I keep some biodegradable toilet paper, biodegradable wet wipes, and a little container of hand sanitizer, which can also be used to get fire going as a quick tender uh, or a, an accelerant because of the alcohol content of that, but a way for me to sanitize and clean up and, and make that process safer all the way around. So I keep a little potty kit as part of uh, part B of my care for self. The next on the care list for me, care two, is gear care. And I carry this field tool maintenance kit. This I also got from Creek Steward at a pocket box. It's just a canvas zipper pouch. The bright red makes it really easy to find in my pouch, uh, my pack. And in it I carry uh, patches that can repair a tent or a tarp. Uh, backpack, whatever, some little pre-made pouches. I keep some uh, lamb's towel, some uh, tallow, sheep tallow. I keep a work sharp uh, field sharpening system. I keep a uh, one ounce brick of pure beeswax. I keep an eyeglass repair kit. Uh, and then I keep some of these other items. I keep my cotton bandana. I keep my cargo tape in here. I keep my sewing kit in here, and then uh, next on my list is going to be communication. That's my next C, and I try to keep, now again, I can use my compass mirror to signal, uh, so that's part of communication. I can use another item that's coming up later, has a, a, a bright orange, kind of a blaze orange color to it. I can use that for a flag for communication. Uh, in my, my first aid kit, I keep this whistle so I can signal with the whistle. That's part of communication. Uh, I also keep in this field tool maintenance kit a carpenter's pencil that I can sharpen with my knife. And I can use that in my journal. So my journal is part of communication. Uh, so I can take coordinates, uh, again, to work with my compass for doing pace counting and calculations to get somewhere right so I can make a map of things that I come across. I can write a note and leave it for somebody. I can put it under a rock or, or stick it to a tree somehow, whatever. Uh, but communication for me is, is critical. And along with the journal, I happen to carry the Field Notes brand, uh, little journals most of the time, and a little uh, leather journal cover and then I carry a pin that has a Fisher Space Pin pressurized ink cartridge in it. So between the pin and the pencil, I can always have some way to write down, even if it's raining or freezing or whatever, uh, information if I need that. Uh, so next for me, that covers the communication. Um, next for me would be uh, collection. Right, so the ability, I talked about containers, and this is another container, but I always keep some kind of a little pouch so I can collect tinder materials or wild edibles or whatever, and this can go on my belt or stays usually attached to my pack via the molly, but some sort of a collection pouch 
I don't usually keep anything in it. I keep that uh, empty so that I don't have to take anything out to collect. I can just put whatever I find in there. So a collection pouch. And then uh, next for me is comfort. And there's a lot of things that fall into comfort. I don't always carry my pipe, but I love my pipe. Uh, sometimes I carry some adult beverage. Uh, I like scotch. So sometimes I'll carry a flask, which is another container with some adult beverage. Not very often, but occasionally. But for me, comfort, the items that I try to carry all the time when I'm going, even just on a day hike, is this small nine and a half foot uh, ultralight hammock to get me off the ground. So if I wind up in an emergency where I have to sleep uh, or I get hurt or whatever, I need to lay down. If I can get this up, uh, all of it's in here. The whoopee slings, the toggles, the carbon fiber toggles, all of it is in here ready to rapid deploy. Uh, not very big, about the size of a Nalgene bottle. Not very heavy. Uh, great little sleep system that I keep in my pack. And then uh, the rest of my comfort is a puffy coat. I talked about communication. This is my puffy coat that has the bright orange uh, inner lining. And then when you put it the other way, it's olive drab, so it's not as visible. Uh, I don't typically want to be visible, but to be able to uh, stay warm if it's cold or windy or whatever. And then a, an acrylic or a synthetic beanie to keep heat in my head if I wind up out overnight or something like that. And then the last for comfort for me is a good pair of work gloves. I have uh, little rings on these here. I can hang them from my pack. I can hang them from a loop on my belt. Uh, but I try to keep a good set of work gloves, leather work gloves with me to use. So my final two items kind of go hand in hand and they're a part of comfort, but I'm giving them their own categories. Uh, first is coffee. I'm a coffee drinker, so I usually carry not this big bag, right? I don't usually carry a whole bag of coffee with me, but a little uh, Ziploc baggie with enough for, you know, five or six cups of coffee in it. Uh, but I carry coffee with me. Uh, it's a morale boost. It will help warm me when it's cold. Uh, I can make it on my on my little Esbit stove. All I have to do is boil water, put the coffee grounds in, let it uh, let it brew for a while with the lid on the the nesting cup, and then pour a little bit more cold water, and I uh, uh, drop the grounds to the bottom, and I have coffee. And then the final item for me is calories, and I don't always take a full size pack meal, right? Sometimes I do, uh, but I don't always take a full-size pack meal, but most of the time I will carry some kind of a snack size, one or two pouches, right? A dehydrated, this is by Thrive, I'm a Thrive representative, but uh, a small amount of calories so that if I do wind up in an emergency situation and I'm stuck overnight, I at least have some kind of nutrients to, uh, to eat and it's warm. So uh, I have a warm meal, I have warm coffee, and all these are just add water to get the meal. Uh, so that kind of rounds out my 10 C's plus. I know it was a little bit long. I think we're pushing a little over half an hour and I apologize for the length, but I wanted to talk about uh, each of those categories and what I carry and all of that fits easily in this small pack it doesn't weigh a whole lot, about 28 pounds with the water. Uh, and it's just a well-rounded, in my opinion, a well-rounded kit. If I wind up uh, in an emergency situation where I'm stuck out overnight for some reason, I've got the stuff to get by until I can get out or get help. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave me any comments down in the comment section below. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and, and got something useful out of it. Thanks for watching.